Once you have signed into the EAP controller, you will see an interface with three primary sections. The first section provides information on APs and stations. The AP portion tells you how many EAPs are connected, disconnected, and pending. You can click on any of these numbers to go to the corresponding page on the Access Points tab. The Stations portion tells you how many users and guests are on the network. You can click on either of these numbers to go to the corresponding page on the Clients tab. To the right of this information is a Refresh button that allows you to refresh the data and set an automatic refresh interval. The Settings button allows you to access settings and the Sign Out button allows you to sign out of the management interface. The second section is the Monitoring area, which provides network usage, data traffic, and client connection information for each EAP, as well as information on the activity of each client. Here you can also monitor network traffic and view detailed status information for each EAP and its clients. The third section outlines settings and allows you to simultaneously configure the wireless settings for all EAPs on the network and change the system settings for the control software. To control your EAPs, you first need to take them under the control of the controller software. This is easy to do when the EAPs are in the same network segment as the computer on which you are running the EAP controller software. If the EAPs are not in the same network segment as the computer, you can discover them using the EAP controller's discover function, which we will discuss later. Click on pending at the top of the screen to see a list of EAPs that you can take under control of the software. Select the desired EAP and click on the Adopt button. Then enter the username and password of the EAP, which are both set to Admin by default. If all of the targeted EAPs have the same username and password, you can click Batch Adopt to adopt them all at the same time. The EAP controller software allows you to upload custom maps and floor plans that represent your indoor environments. You can then drag the unplaced APs from the unplaced APs list to mark their actual locations on the map and create a visual representation of the wireless network. This allows the network administrator to monitor and maintain the network with great efficiency. When the EAP controller is launched, a sample map is displayed. The legend in the bottom corner defines the scale of the map. To upload a map, click Configure Maps in the top right corner of the map area. Click Add and create a name or description for the new map. Then select your customized map image and click Create. The map will then appear in the drop-down list. To define the scale of the map, select a map from the drop-down list and use the zoom slider to zoom in and out. Click on the triangle button and draw a line on the map by clicking and dragging the cursor. If you need to redraw the line, just click and drag again to draw a new line. Once you are satisfied with the line, click Next. Enter the distance that the line represents in the distance field to set the scale of the map. The distance is measured in meters by default, but you can switch to feet in the drop-down menu on the right. Click Confirm to start using your new map as a visual model of your wireless network. Now you can drag the unplaced EAPs onto the map. You can drag connected EAPs to the appropriate locations on the map to create a visual overview of all connected EAPs on the network and view detailed information for each. After dragging an EAP to the map, you can click on it to reveal additional options. Click here to lock and unlock the location of the selected EAP. You can also click here to remove the selected EAP from the map and send it back to the unplaced APs list. Click here to display detailed information for the device. This information includes the IP address and radio status of each EAP. It also allows you to change each EAP's name and enable load balancing for each individual device. A detailed demonstration of this can be found in a different tutorial. Click Label to view the EAP's name, which by default is the EAP's MAC address. Click Details to display the EAP's name, MAC address, IP address, transmitting and receiving channel, number of connected users, and number of connected guests. Click Coverage to view an approximate visual representation 
of each EAP's signal coverage area on the map.